This is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the hand wheel and the bobbin winder system from Cute, the Singer Model 99K. And the hand wheel comes off like uh, most of the Singer, vintage Singer uh, machines that I've seen. This is the clamp stop motion, uh, clamp stop motion clamping screw right here the the chrome and it's just got a little set screw in there and you can remove it or you can back it out about halfway and then you turn it to the left and it's it's kinda heavy so you don't want to let it drop on the hand wheel and scratch it or anything and in this case um, the clamp stop motion clamp washer actually came off with it. This little washer with the two uh, tabs in the center and the three ears that stick out. So we'll put those aside. Um, once, once you have this off the hand wheel is ready to pull but in this case we have an external motor and a motor belt so I've got to get that motor belt off of there first so the way to do that is the motor is held on uh, with a bracket and the bracket is screwed in right to the back of the machine here so if we loosen that screw then we can uh, slide the motor up and down on the bracket and if we just lift it up about an inch or so, there'll be enough slack on the belt to just pull it off of the pulley like that. Now I can just pull the whole hand wheel off. And of course the belt, the belt comes with it. And that's the first thing I noticed since this is my first iron um, you know black what I call the iron horse machines my first black singer is this is really heavy that's the first thing I notice compared to the hand wheels of the 301 401 404 Rocketeers like that but irregardless it still comes off the same way so let me put that to the side and we'll take a look at the bobbin winder system now get back up here and get a pretty good angle on it maybe so this bobbin uh, winder attaches to a belt cover bracket and this is just screwed right from the top right down into the back end of the body casting and you don't need to remove the hand wheel to to remove this uh, belt cover bracket and the bobbin winder frame. I just I just took that uh, hand wheel off to show you how to do it and you could change the motor belt but also just to give you a better view of this. So if see if I lift up my camera and the tripod here I think I can show you that screw. There's one chrome screw right there and that's what um, I'll be taking off but I need to hold the bracket in my hand so I'll set the camera back down here and go up there and loosen that screw and the bracket just lifts straight up once you got the screw loose just lifts straight up off of the machine and with the little screw fell out I'll show you that little screw And then here's the the uh, belt cover bracket. You see some of the parts for the bobbin winder system here. It's all attached to it. Mm -hmm. So if you need to dis to take this apart, um, you know, to clean it or to replace a broken spring, there is a couple of springs on this. Um, 
there's two mounting screws and one of them is going to hold the uh, tripping arm which is this uh, silver piece back here and it also holds the bobbin winder frame which is this black piece that holds the pulley and friction ring on one side and it holds the, the spindle on the other side and of course the spindle is where you where you put the bobbin so uh, I'm going to start with taking off that frame and the tripping arm and it's just this one big uh, screw right there it's called the hinge screw because the frame can swing or hinge on it and uh, back behind the frame is going to be a uh, bobbin winder frame spring uh, in a depressed area of the bracket and then that uh, tripping arm It's a, it's a little bit longer than you think. You won't have as much trouble with it as I am here. I'm just reaching over the camera and holding it up in the air. Almost got it. Okay, there's the hinge screw. also called the swivel screw but it's a hinge screw because this top part here does not have threads and that's what the frame hinges on then as we pull that apart you'll see here's the bracket with the um, stop latch still attached by its own screw put that down for a moment and we'll, we'll look a little closer. Let me pull the friction ring off here. Also known as a rubber tire. This is called the pulley. The bobbin winder pulley. And you can see the tip of the spring sticking out here. And then the spring is held in place on this side by this uh, tripping arm and it has its own screw so if we loosen that we can take it right off of the frame now I don't know how often these uh, springs inside break or wear out because I'm just you know this is my first experience with this model but I'm assuming they could and also, I would think that the recessed area I'll be showing you can get full of lint and junk, so it might just need a nice cleaning someday. So there's the screw for the uh, tripping arm here. And now we can see the spring is recessed in, into an area of that, of that bobbin winder frame. You see the arm coming out here. And the way it stays in there is at the bottom of the spring is a 90 degree bend and what I'm going to call the spring tail. And it goes into a little hole there. So that end of the spring is held in place. And this um, arm, so to speak, or finger of the spring is... Let's see, tilt this down. I want to. I don't know if this will show. There's a little a cut out area right here. A little section cut out, about three eighths of an inch or so. And the spring goes up in there and rests. So when you want to take it out, you can push on the spring a little and pop it out of that recessed area. You can see the spring starting to come out. If the spring is reluctant to come out, just take a needle or a pin and you can, uh, let's see if I can find one here. You can push in this little hole 
on the back side, you'll push on that spring tail and that will also help pull the spring out. So that's what the spring looks like. It's about three and a half coils. It's got a little 90 degree spring tail at the bottom. At the top it's got that little bent finger that comes out. Okay, I'll put that to the side. Now you can see just the rest of the frame with the recessed area. You might be able to see this cut out area better now. Right there. Okay, so we'll put that aside. If we go back to the uh, belt cover bracket now, uh, the stop latch and spring and screw is all that's left on here. And that's just another uh, hinge screw here. Which, there we go. We can take that out. And there's a similar spring behind it in another recessed area. Except it's got two little tails. Which I'll show you and explain how those work. But there's the little hinge screw for the stop latch. Okay, and there's the stop latch itself. And can you see right there, there's a hole in that silver stop latch. And a tail coming off the spring pokes into that hole. And that's how the top of the spring um, you know, has something to push against for the springing action. So we can just lift that right off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, there's the spring down in there. And you can, maybe you can see that little tail sticking up. There's one like it on the bottom of the spring, and it, there we go, that came out pretty easy. It's a two and a half coil spring that has uh, two tails on it. See, maybe one on the left here, pointing up, and 180 degrees from it, and one on the right, pointing down. So the one that points down goes in to a little hole in there just like the the other spring did I think you can see a little light through the hole there and the same thing if it's stuck in there and all dirty and gunky you can come on the back side and you can push a needle against that spring tail from the outside just enough to push the pin out and remove the spring so that's most of the parts of the bob and winder system. There's one more down here, one more part down here. So I can get this a little closer. And that's called the thread guide. Right here. And if you saw my bobbin winding video for this machine, that was the first time I'd ever used it and I wasn't sure about this. Okay, let me come down here a little bit. And, uh, but it turns out I was right. When you run the thread over here to wind the bobbin, uh, you bring it across the front. It's coming up from the arm thread guide at an angle. And you put it from front to back in that lower slot. You see that bracket kind of looks like the number two. So you put it from front to back in the lower slot, and then you bring it out from back to front in the top part and then this thread goes up to the bobbin and that's what keeps a little tension on the thread as you wind the thread so that it winds smoothly okay and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off to show it to you it's just held on by one screw called the thread guide screw and so we can get back there because I want to show you the, the slot that the screw goes through because this thread guide is adjustable 
And what I mean by adjustable is uh, you position it to get the best even wind on the bobbin thread when you're winding the bobbin. So I'll show you that little that little guy. He's a little guy. I'm always afraid I'm going to drop him. Okay. I'll find a safe place for that. <laughs> and then can you see that can you see that slot in the base? So when you have that screwed on, you, whoops, because of that uh, slot in the base, you can move it a little to the left or right. And the reason you may want to do that is if you wind a bobbin and it seems to pile up like on the left side, you would loosen the screw that holds this and you would move it a little bit to the right right like a sixteenth of an inch and then then see if the bobbin wound evenly if you were winding it and it piled up more on the right side you would move this bracket to the left Okay, and that's common on a lot of machines some of the 99's I know have a whole different bobbin winding system and down here instead of this thread guide is like a little bobbin winding tension disc that has a spring and puts tension on the wire but this one has the thread guide and that's what it looks like and like I said I know this is a 1956 version of the model 99k it's got reverse it happens to have this this type of a mm, belt cover bracket and the bobbin winder frame and so forth that I told you. Um, some of the earlier ones I know had a gear system built into the uh, bobbin winding system and had a thread gear up on it and it was a more complicated system than this one. But uh, that's what's on here so that's all I can show you right for today. So um, if we, <clears throat> excuse me, if we want to reassemble that, we just kind of start going in reverse. Um, right. So I'm going to have to put the I'm going to have to put the spring back in here, the little spring with the twin tails, and I've got to get. And that both the tails seem the same to me. Um, I don't know if you look at it. If there, if one of the tails is shorter, I'm guessing it goes in the bottom. Let's see if I can get this lined up. It's kind of funny because when you put the you can eyeball it, but when you put the spring in, then you can't see the hole anymore. <laughs> But you have to get it in, you have to get it lined up into that hole. There. I felt it kind of click in. So I felt it click in. And there it is with the little pin sticking up. And the stop latch is going to go on that pin. And it's going to come under the bracket. Like with the little curve latch up. Like so. And let's see if I can get that. There we go. I got that latch with the hole on top of the spring tail. So now we're seeing that, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Then I'm just going to put back the hinge screw. And that easy part will be uh, already done. If I can get the screw to start in there. 
I can put it down here. Maybe I can have a steadier hand and get that started. There we go. Now just like most uh, hinge screws, we're going to turn it in all the way, deadhead it, but we want to be sure that the stop latch is flush with the bracket. That tells you that the spring is in there properly and that both spring tails are in the holes. And we can tighten that up. Yeah, it wasn't quite in there flat. Now I can tighten it the rest of the way. Then I'll check and make sure that I've got my spring action, which I do. Okay, let me get the other parts here and we'll continue with the assembly. Okay, the next step that we want to do in our reassembly here is to get the uh, tripping arm and the bobbin winder frame spring mounted back to the bobbin winder frame. And to start that we have to reinsert the spring into the recessed area and get that little pin, that little pin into the hole in the recessed area. And that's kind of the trickiest little part for me is because once you get the spring in there you can't see the hole so you have to try and eyeball it where it is and get the spring in there and it's a very snug fit um, to get that, that spring into the hole. There's not a lot of clearance in the hole. It almost kind of snaps in. I mean, when you get it in there, you, you, you feel it right away. But I find myself, when I do this, that's what I fill around with the most, is getting that, getting that lined up there. But it definitely has to be in there. Okay, got it. Now here's a part that um, people are going to miss and forget is that little cut out area here. You have to bring the finger or arm of the spring up into that area because that's how it gets tension as it, as it rests against this side. And that's the working area of that finger right across there. So let's see if I can get it up there now. Will it stay while I put the rest on? Yeah. So did you did you see that? Let me push it out of there. I just push it up and tuck it into that. Whoop. Push it up and push it back into that recessed area. So hopefully that'll stay while I push the I put the the tripping arm back on. So with the spindle at the bottom and facing you, recessed area at the top, you're going to put the tripping arm on with the arm facing to the left. Okay? And it's going to line up there eventually, but more importantly to start is you got to be able to see the screw hole in that slot. So you get that lined up you want to take the tripping arm mounting screw and get it down in there and get it started. There we go. Now I noticed when I took this apart that the screw had the, the the arm had been adjusted so that the screw was over on the right side of that slot pretty far, if not all the way. So that's where I'm going to 
put it to start with. And I'll show you how you can test and adjust that once everything's back together. So that looks good now. So with this, I've got to put the frame back on to the belt cover bracket. And, of course, this, the bracket like that, with the latch over here on the left, and the spindles on the left. But this um, finger of the spring has to be up under the edge here. So I've kind of found to get it, it's easier to get the, the, the swivel or hinge screw started by putting it like that because that way I can get this the spring down here and the tripping arm is down by the latch where it's going to end up working together now my spindle isn't under the latch yet but I can fix that but this seems an easier way to get that darn frame mounted back onto the bracket. Hey, don't make a liar out of me, Mr. Bracket. Yeah, I think I got it started now. So, it's my spring under the curve. Now let's take my thumb and push up on the latch so I can swing it down and get yeah get the spindle under the latch. Now let's see if I can uh, tighten this up because everything has to be flush here. If your spring is still um, in if your spring is still, well, I left my screwdriver someplace. If your spring is still in that recessed area, uh, in the notch in there, then this should tighten up pretty good. Can't have that overlapping though, because that has to be flushed down to the black. And one time when I was working on this, the spring had popped out of that recessed area and I was tightening the screw and I couldn't get everything flush and I was, couldn't figure it out till I started to take it apart and saw that. So this is looking good on this side with my spring is under the my spring is under the frame up here and my spindle is under the latch. Let's look up here and see if everything is Flash, oh my screw is still sticking out a little bit. Okay, these parts all look flush together, no gaps here. So is that sticking out because my spring came out or I just didn't tighten it all the way? I think whatever I lined up this time is working better. Because when I look here, I can see that my screw went in all the way flush to the frame and the frame on the winder frame on is flush with the tripping arm and the tripping arm on this side is flush with the bracket so that looks really good and my spring is under the curve up here and my latch is above the spindle or my spindle is below the latch so when it's sitting on the machine like this let me go ahead and put the friction ring on and I would put the bobbin on the spindle and I'd line up the hole in the bobbin to the little pin on the spindle
like so. Latch down, or the frame down against the hand wheel, the latch should should fall into place here. There. And that uh, locking or stop latch falls in here to keep the bobbin from falling off. And then as it winds the bobbin, the thread's going to push, push that stop latch up and it's going to uh, unlock itself over here from the locking arm and pop the tire and the whole frame away from the wheel. And it did. Okay, I think that's good. Now we may need to adjust that a little bit. But let's get it back on the machine so that we can actually test it. My latch is still... Stop latch is still good. Okay, so remember this just sits right up here behind this collar like so. And you can put this on after you put the hand wheel on or before. It doesn't really matter. Let me get the mounting screw for that and get it ready to mount. Let's see if I can give you a pretty good picture of that maybe. So you see the you see the hole right there that that screw is going to go through. We'll put it right up there on that collar. And I'll go in from the top with my screw. So you got that hole lined up with the hole in the frame. There we go. Yes. All right. Now that's easier to, to test. Push it down against the hand wheel. Wind the bobbin. When the bobbin gets full, pushes up on the latch. And the frame spring springs it away from the hand wheel to stop. Auto fill, auto stop. Now, let's go ahead and get our uh, hand wheel and motor belt and everything back on here. I'm going to take my heavy, heavy hand wheel. <laughs> right? And I'm going to slip my belt on it. And I'm going to slide it on to the end of that arm. Okay. Then I'm going to put my clamp, stop motion clamp washer with the tabs inside sticking out towards me. And then it's, you got a 50-50 chance. It's either going to go on like that or 180 degrees the other way. So I'm going to put it on where it looks like the little cat ears are up here at the top and the chin is down at the bottom. I'm going to try that. It's going to be my first try. Then I'll take the stop motion screw and carefully, carefully, I don't want it to hit that, oops, yeah, kind of slipped off there. Maybe I'll take a moment and put a drop of oil on those threads. They're feeling a little rough and dirty. Let's see if that helped anything.
Mm -hmm. Smooth as butter. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me get my set screw back in. The clamp, stop, motion, screw, set, screw. Now it should go to the left just a little and stop because that stop screw is hitting one of those ears and when I turn it back to the right it clamps down I can't go any farther. So it's a very short turn like maybe one eighth of the diameter. So now I know I got that right. Hey, we lower this down so we can see the motor bracket again because I've got to lift the motor back up and, and put that um, motor belt back onto the pulley. Oh, my motor's still up, so I should be able to just lift it a little and put the belt back on the pulley. Good job. Now, if I straighten it out <clears throat> and let it drop down on the bracket, just the weight of the motor will provide the right tension on the belt. Don't push down and force it down, but just let the motor come to its natural rest against the belt, and that'll be a very good tension on your belt. And then we're going to tighten the bracket screw onto the motor bracket to keep everything there in place. Okay, and I'll check my tension again. Yep. Now, as far as adjusting that tripping arm, what we want to see is, is when we push this frame, come back up now, when we push the frame down, does the friction ring make contact with the back of the hand wheel, and will it turn the spindle? So we'll push it down, I'll just turn the hand wheel by hand, and look, it's not it's not turning that it's not turning the friction ring so it's not making contact back in here so now that I've tested and I've seen when I try and engage the bobbin winder it doesn't contact the hand wheel I just need to make a simple adjustment here and I'm going to do that at the uh, mounting screw of the tripping arm here on the back side of the bobbin winder frame. And all I'm going to do is loosen that screw and then I'm going to uh, push the frame down towards the hand wheel until I s feel and see that it contacts the, the hand wheel. And it's not, it's not very far to go. And then I'm going to hold it there while I tighten that screw. So that should give me the right, uh, the correct amount of contact with uh, the hand wheel. You know, between the friction ring and the back of the hand wheel here. So let's let's see if I can get this a little closer for you. Let's try this again. Okay, so um, now here, let me just put on a bobbin, line the hole up with the pin, engage it by pushing the frame down, and then let's turn the hand wheel, and there we go. And you see here you can you can see the bobbins turning now. Okay. Uh, let's see, let me run the motor a little bit here. See I'll disengage the stop motion. 
so there won't be any needle bar feed dog activity. There we go. Very nice. Now let's see if the uh, stop latch will kick out. So as this uh, bobbin would get full, let me run it here, then it would move this latch back and then the frame spring would push the uh, friction ring away from the wheel. So it looks like I got it back together correctly. Yeah, hey, how about that? Let me get this bobbin back on there. So engage, run, and then if you want to fill it all the way, it should auto stop and kick that out. So, there we have it. How to remove the hand wheels, slip off the motor belt. Which that, that's also kind of a little video how to change the motor belt. <laughs> and uh, remove the entire bobbin winder assembly up here. And dismantle it for cleaning our parts replacement put it back together and then adjust it for the correct pressure against the, the hand wheel. Good job. So you can do this now. You can see that it's, um, you know, it's a little fiddly, but it's not uh, impossible to do. Now the one thing that I, I didn't do, is I'm going to take this all apart again to clean it. But the one thing I didn't do was to was to put this uh, thread guide with the little screw back here on the bed of the machine. And and when you do that, just remember that you you want to look at it kind of like the number two here, and that the screw and the slot uh, of the guide would go in the back behind it. It's going to fall. Oh, no, it won't. I thought it would fall over. So you can take that off if you need to clean around there or, you know, and I showed you how to loosen that and move it left or right if you're not getting the correct fill, even fill on your bobbin. So how'd you like that? Your comments and suggestions are welcome. And uh, I want to thank you for watching and for tuning into my AndyTube channel. And I hope that you'll come back and see some more of my videos, including more videos about Cute, the Singer Model 99K. Take care.